Hello and welcome to the 23rd video in this series programming Simple Floppy Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX. If you can hear an alarm going off in the background, I apologize. Um, there's some building nearby, I guess, maybe being burgled or something. Ah, it's turned off now. But today seems to be a day of lawn mowers and alarms, so you may have a lot of accompanying noise. So what we're going to do in this video, well, you remember last video, just to recap, we had this, we made this function inside our Java, inside this uh, class, JNI helper class here, that we then called via the hello world scene in the initialization with the argument of 10 as an integer. We declared our function here and set up all of the JNI code in here. And we're able to call a function in the Java from C++. We're going to do a little extension of that in this video because there, are, there will be cases where you are going to want to update the UI either from the C++ and that's usually in the case of maybe showing a toast which is just a little dialog box that pops up and fades away again with a message um, or when you want to update the UI from the, the Java here you want to update the UI in the C++. In both cases it's essential that your update happens on the UI thread otherwise the app will more than likely crash. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to call a function from the C plus a function in the Java from the C plus plus that makes a little message box come up on the screen with a couple of arguments just to show that it works. A couple of things before that. One is I've unchecked the build automatically option in here. Uh, I should have done that at the start because I was wondering why um, I would say seven times out of ten the Eclipse was crashing when I was exporting the application package. Well that's usually the reason because build automatically is building all the time and, and they conflict together and something goes wrong. I don't know what but it has memory address usually crashes and is, is always a problem because you have to create, clean the project and rebuild the whole thing to uh, get the application package again so it costs a lot of time anyway. So that's one point. And the second point is in the last video I put a comment in the comment section. I made a mistake when I was describing something. I said that here in our method description we've got one argument, the integer, the i. If we had two integers as an argument, so int num, comma, int another num, I said that we would have a signature like this. This isn't true. The signature actually will be without a semicolon. I um, got confused by the fact that the string argument has to have a semicolon. This, this L Java lang string does have a semicolon after it, but the sort of pure types, the ints and booleans and things, just stay without a, coma, a, 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 colon, a semicolon separating them. So apologies about that and you will see that kind of signature in this video because we're going to do a function with two arguments. So let's first of all then set up our function inside our C code inside the JNI helper. Now because of the way the size of the IDE here or the way it's laid out compared with Xcode I'm going to try and sit with these tabs above here being used for the files rather than changing file on the left hand side and zooming the window right and left all the time. Um, so you should know what a file I'm in from the tab at the top, hopefully anyway. So we'll call this one then call my Java toast JNI and we'll take in a number again and let's also take in a bool as an argument and just call it my bool like so. And I'm going to take this definition then with the void and drop this at the bottom here and it's going to work in a very similar way obviously to all the code that's inside here so I'm going to copy and paste this code and thank you for doing that just tab that backwards and now I'll just update the logging information here so that we know everything's working and then the signature here is taking an integer but it's also taking a boolean which is a capital Z like that now the other thing I want to change is, and I've already put it in at the top here, I've added a class named Simple Floppy Robin and this time we're referencing with this our Simple Floppy Robin class, the main activity. And the reason is it's because the function's going to be inside there. So instead of having class name CJNI helper, we'll have a Simple Floppy Robin. And you need to make sure all this stuff is right because if it doesn't find the method then invariably the app will crash. Um, uh, actually, one more thing there, you can here also have call non-static void methods or just call void method. And interestingly, when in my last app I produced, I had a bug in here where I wasn't calling the static method. On Android 4, that actually didn't cause a crash, but on Android 2, it did cause a crash. So 
make sure you test on a variety of Android versions, especially when you're doing this JNI stuff, because on some versions it works, even though you've made errors, and on others it doesn't. So you have to be pretty careful with this kind of stuff with the, the syntax. Anyway, so call my Java Toast JNI is now declared in here, is declared in here. And the last thing I want to do then is just actually inside the hello world scene.cpp is where I press start game. So after a, a delay, I want to call here. So I'll just call 10 and no, let's make 40 and let's make a Boolean value of true. So this will call to make the toast when I start the game. So now then back into the Java, we'll go back into simple floppy robin dot Java and we need to create our function. So I'm just going to put it in here and it'll be a public void and I'll give it the same name so we know what's what. And we're going to take in an integer num and a boolean in Java. Uh, just my bool. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what the names are if they correspond to the C++ or not. The main thing is that obviously the types are the same. And now we need to think about how we're going to run this. Uh, call this toast. Now the first thing is I need to make this a static function because inside here obviously we are calling a static method. We're getting static method info and calling a static void method. The problem with that is of course. I need access to our actual activity, not just the class. So there are a number of ways of doing this, and this is the way I do it. But I'm going to make a static variable. I can't spell as usual. Of type simple floppy robin class and call it me. And then in the on create, I'm just going to say me equals this. So it's a sort of circular way of getting a reference to the current running activity. And now what we can do inside here is we can actually then run, uh, call a function that's available to every activity in the activity class called run on UI thread. Now one thing we do need to do when we're doing this way, we'll be making a runnable, um, is we need to make these arguments in the function here then final to be able to do that. So what we can do now is say me dot and then run on UI thread. And then now we make a new and runnable. Just double click there so Eclipse nicely creates everything for us. And all we need to do now here is create a message that we want to put into our toast. So I'll just put uh, game started, comma, and let's put num and plus num. And then let's also um, put the boolean as well. So we'll just put my bool plus, and I'll do a conditional here so we can just put the, the, the true or false as well. So my bool equals true question mark and true otherwise false. And a W, whatever. Okay, so that's our message. And then to make a little message box or a toast in Android, if you're not familiar, it's just toast and make text. We need a context, so that's me, and get application context. Then we need the text, which is our message, and then we need the duration. And the duration is simply a toast, whoops, toast dot and I think there's a length long. Yep, there's a length long. The last thing we need to do is then just call show. So this will then show our toast, hopefully, in the application. And that's all actually we need to do. I'm just going to double check that the method names are indeed the same. Call my Java toast JNI. Yes it is. Oops. Call my Java toast JNI. I've lost the package explorer. So that should be everything. So I'm just going to type uh, build there and for some reason the console's disappeared down the bottom. Uh, I won't get it back for now because, oh, is it this button here? No, it's not this button here. Ah, I've lost the con, I'm losing everything here. I hate this IDE. Okay, good. So console's gone missing down the bottom but things seem to have built okay. So I'm going to, the video will fade out now, I'm going to build the application package uh, as you're familiar with so the package is built and I've just started up the simple floppy robin application 
If I go to the debugging, you can see that we've still got the Java value with 10 here. And now if I start the game by clicking on the Robin, you can see that our toast has appeared on the screen there with the information. If I just do it again, then you can see our toast has appeared on the screen there uh, with the relevant argument information. So that then is a pretty simple thing to do, but it's actually quite a critical thing to do. Um, also in the logging here, I'm just seeing as well, we've got the, the calls as well to my toast made and everything seems to work. Okay, so like I said, it's critical when you want to do anything with the UI that you can, you do all these updates via the UI thread, which is what we've implemented in, implemented in this function here. So one more video to do, and that's going the other way, calling functions in the C++ native functions. And then we can get on with actually implementing um, all of this methodology for our app. At the moment, it's just example applications because I want to make sure it's understood clearly what's going on. And then we can get on with implementing in the application. So I hope the video made some kind of sense. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.